next weekend uh, is our local steam rally, uh, steam rally at Corbridge. I'll be going up there on the Saturday and Sunday uh, with Richard with the Centre Steam Wagon. So if I'm up there, by all means, call across and say hello, uh, come and shake my hand. It'll be really nice to meet you. I've had quite a few questions uh, from viewers regarding what sort of face converter I used to run the Harrison lathe. This is it. It came with the lathe. It's a Transwave rotary converter. Converts 240 volt single phase from a 16 amp supply to 440 volt three phase. I'll open it up and have a look and see you can see exactly what's in there. Basically a big transformer and some capacitors. I haven't actually got a problem with this. It's a it's a something that's been the matter since the day I got it actually. There's no cooling fan on the motor. And after you've run it for about an hour, hour and a half, the motor starts to get warm. So I'm going to have a look inside it and put a cooling fan on it. As you can see, it's in, it's in good fettle inside. Nice and clean. Big transformer, some big capacitors. Not a good hard to see, really. This is the electric motor, it's used for the phase conversion. The beauty of these things is, you can run any machine that's within the capacity of the converter, you simply plug it in, plug three phase straight in and it'll work, which means it'll work the original switch gear, any transformers on the lathe or milling machine or whatever, so all your power feeds, your work lights, everything will work. Just like putting it into a three phase supply on the wall. There was a fan in here when I first got it, but the fan was broken. Uh, so now it's got nothing at all to keep it cool. Quite a nice smooth feeling motor. My friend Bob gave us this one, which will do the job except the hole in there is too small. The motor shaft 23, the bore in there is 20. In actual fact, there's enough material to bore that out to 23mm. Right, this is the setup I've come up with to uh, make the hole bigger. It's going to be out when I'm out in the lathe, plus I've got the Rotary converter up on the bench out the way. So I'm just going to do it on the little machine with the boring head. I've got it lined up so it's basically touching all the way around. Well, I think they were point 0.1. The mill each division on there, I can't remember now, it's that long ago since I used it for real. Now you're running nice and slowly. Side. It's, a, it's a reasonable fit. I think a little bit of Loctite on there and that'll, that'll do the job for us splendidly. And plenty of clearance on the housing. All it does is circulate a little bit of air and blow some air on the motor. I'll clean this up, put some Loctite on. It's just one of them jobs that I've been going to do for It'll be three or four, three or four years now. I just haven't gotten on to it. A bit 
Rock tight on there. It's actually gripping, it's turning the motor so it'll, it'll be alright. Once the Loctite gets it, it'll be going to go for off. Interesting swap of plastic, I used to do it and cut your fingers with it. And here the, that was the episode last week with the, the stainless steel off the crankshaft, he looked quite nicely. The Loctite did this job and fastened the pull onto the, the motor on the fierce converter. I'm going to make a little frame for it. Um, I put some wheels on so I can mount it down the side of my lathe. I also have a shelf on here to keep any swarf and shite out of it. And it'll also be a handy place to keep chucks and chuck keys and whatnot. I've got some rubber feet to go on as well um, to try and kill a little bit of the noise. It's actually not that noisy. First thing I'll do is machine these two faces parallel to each other. To be careful because there's a that's quite a lot sticking out the vase, just a nice gentle cut. This is a, a new chuck, or at least a new chuck to me. It's an old bright chuck, a real high quality chuck. A friend of mine, lad called Dick, and give us it. And I bought a mandrel for it. It the uh, what an engineer on show last weekend, or the weekend before last. I'm just going to eyeball this up. <coughs> You know, you can feel it break through under the, that's it, through through the end of the drum in the front shop. Right, next thing we need to find the centre of this and drill a hole straight down through there. We'll just use this edge frame at the, to find the middle of it. Getting the reading the 18 off the 18's 9. Right, we need to find the centre that way. And once again, exactly the same method. I've got 56, 57. 
half of 57 28.5 28 and we'll go Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-eight point five. So that should be right in the middle. It even looks like it's in the middle. So if it looks like it's in the middle, it'll be in the middle. Right, that's down into the crankshaft now, into the, the main journal. Now we're going to go right down through into the big end down there. The chips are actually coming out of the hole in the end of the main. Got the oil down there. Right, next we need a hole in the crank pin itself. Okay, so this is still in the centre of the vase, all you need to do is find the centre of the, the pin. Am I doing this sort of thing on race engines years ago, or at least making standard stuff on the race stuff, cross pulling cranks to get better oil flow? I don't suppose this engine will do any real work unless somebody puts it into a, into a boat but I might as well give it a, a fighting chance of staying alive which again this, one, this just goes halfway through into the drilling you can drill it all the way through, that's what they call cross drilling so you'd have oil coming up on both sides of the both sides of the journal but it's, it's not pressure fed, it's just oil that trickles in from the main bearing. Oh. I need to snap a drill off at this stage in the proceedings. Okay, that's it through. This Nuga Dragon tool really is a, a splendid bit of gear, does an excellent job. Really neat and tidy.
and that's that hard weld and it's taken that quite nicely. I've been putting oil down into that oil there where I'm thinking about what to do with these counterbalance weights and when I turn it over you can see I've got a nice trickle of oil coming out the big end it's obviously leaking out of that hole as well which needs blanking off there's also a hole in there which needs blanking off but you get the idea it's going to supply oil to the big end you'll probably need much bigger oil cups on here um, probably with a wick in so the oil's not running in as fast it doesn't need a great lot of oil to, to lubricate these bearings are real high quality bronze and that's a bit of good steel that was a yen eight and these are 316 stainless so it's basically I don't think it'll ever wear out I would like to see in the original crank for this engine when it was originally supplied as a kit or whatever it was probably a forging and machine from a forging yeah, the oil's gone there already and it's quite thick oil I'm putting in it's steam cylinder oil lovely stuff feels absolutely splendid that Are you looking forward to going to America? Yes. Are you? For what? You know my only problem is, all that time on the plane with you. I just take tablets. <laughs> I love you. I love you too.